I'm sure um, you've opened this video because um, sometime maybe you may be wondering and asking yourself, can God really forgive me? Is it really in God's position to forgive me? Um, and I know sometimes we may be feeling so much guilt in uh, the things that we have done. And uh, we feel that it's, it's like God cannot forgive me of what I've done. And uh, sometimes we are mortified by some of the things that we have done. They kill us slowly. We feel it's, 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 it's really so bad what I've done. And uh, is God really going to forgive me for this? Now, are you wondering if forgiveness is possible? Are you really wondering about this? Because uh, we understand that the conviction of sin can bring us to a place of feeling helpless and uh, hopeless and our shame tempts us to think that uh, no one much less God could forgive us and uh, we might wonder how can we go on what can we what can we do how, how can we do this how possible is it that God can forgive us and uh, what possible hope could there be but I want to tell you today, my friends, that God can forgive you. He can absolutely do forgive you, all right? So uh, today I want to speak about this. And uh, I want to explain to you that uh, the Bible is very clear that uh, God forgives sins, all right? And uh, have you heard that uh, God is a forgiving God? Have you heard about his great love? Because uh, the Bible tells us in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Getting some point here? Alright. So no matter what you have done, you have not out God's ability to forgive you. And uh, the Bible tells us that all humans have sinned. Everybody has sinned. Okay? Everybody. The Bible tells us in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody, everybody has done this. Alright? We have all sinned. And each of us is deserving of eternal separation from God. Look at Romans 6.23. Romans 6. Uh, 23. See what the Bible says. We are all supposed to be separated from God. Everybody. Because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And uh, I'm sure most of you might be wondering and asking yourself, what did I do? What did I do? You see, there are some people who know that they are sinners, but there are others who say, what did I actually do? I didn't uh, lie to anyone. I didn't do any bad thing. You see, I've 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 gone to to church all day. I've I've been a good person. What what actually did I do? Why accuse? Why are you accusing me of being a sinner? Let me tell you. The Bible tells us that uh, we all come from Adam. All right, Adam was the first man created, and Adam fell short of the glory of God. He disobeyed God. And every child who was born after Adam was born in the image of a sinner, the image of Adam. Let's go to the Bible in the book of uh, Genesis, all right? Let me show you. Uh, Genesis 5, verse 3. I want you to see how Adam, how Adam, he gave birth to a child and that child was born in his image. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness. You see? Not the likeness of God, but his own likeness. After his image. Not the image of God. Everybody born in this world is born after the image of Adam, the fallen man. And called his name Seth. Is that making some sense to you? Are you seeing why you are born a sinner? And uh, now, the sins that you do is because already right now you have a, a seed of sin inside you. And you keep on sinning over and over because that seed of sin is already planted in you. And uh, you feel that you want to sin over. It's just you are, you're just adding sin on top of sin. 
you're just adding sin on top of sin on top of sin and things like that so you cannot claim that you're you're clean no unless you become born again you see you are born into this world you're born into this world as a sinner so jesus said that unless once one a person is born of water the way your mother water broke and you that was the beginning of life you are born in this world and then you're born of the spirit you have to be born two times born again born of water and born of spirit you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven have you seen the point here so what does being born of the spirit mean when you believe the gospel when you believe that jesus died for your sins was buried and rose again as is written in the scripture then you're born in the spirit because you basically pick jesus's life and put it onto yourself are you seeing the point here because uh, that's the heart of the matter and unless you understand this it's going to be very difficult for you to be saved all right so we understand that god forgives god does forgive he tells us all the time if we confess our sins is faithful and just we acknowledge that we are sinners we acknowledge you see the problem with people is that they don't want to acknowledge that they are they are sinners and once you acknowledge that you're a sinner then the work of jesus is impacted on you the work that jesus did at the cross is put in you so you have to understand no matter the sin that you've done whether it be rape it be murder it be terrorism it be adultery theft pride gossip jealousy lying not fully uh, loving others anything name it we deserve to be punished all right and uh, it is an all or nothing scenario okay and uh, god does not judge us on whether we are good uh, or you know things like that or maybe whether our good things outweigh the bad things like most religions teach no god does not judge judge us based on that he judges us on the basis of do we accept him do we accept him his payment that he did he paid for us at the cross you see jesus did something for us at the cross he paid everything for us now if you're there and uh, you don't want to believe that jesus died for us for you then you still remain in your sins because the bible tells us in uh, the most famous verse john 3 verse 16 this is a, one of the most famous verses that uh, we've always read for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life it's all about believing it's not about doing anything else it's believing do you believe because many people think that jesus came so that he can uh, accuse us of these accusers of... no we are already accused by the law of moses moses already told us you are this you have done this you have done this do not steal do not kill do not you, you see moses already told us that we are really bad people but this is the reason why god sent jesus to come here okay for god sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved so he that believeth on him is not condemned the moment you believe in jesus you're not condemned you can be condemned of anything you get past sin you become someone who cannot sin because a new creature cannot sin the bible tells us that but he that believeth not is condemned already if you don't believe you're already condemned because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten son all right are you seeing the point here because you have not believed in the name of the only begotten son of god friends this is something that you need to understand and i put it into your understanding all right you need to understand that so god made a way god did made a way for forgiveness and uh, not just for some sin but for all of it every sin that you have ever committed even the sins which are not yours the sins which came by uh, adam 
every other sin, God made a way of how you can be forgiven. There is no sin that God cannot forgive. No matter what you've done, God will forgive you if you come to him by faith. I don't know if you're getting the point. So, what is this way? The only way, the only one way, the only one way of forgiveness is through Jesus Christ. God will not forgive you because you promise to do better next time. And you see, God forgive me because I, I will not repeat it again. No, it's not based on that. Or because you make amends, you try to amend it because uh, you, you, know, you try to do good things to cater for the bad things. No, it doesn't work like that. He will forgive you because Jesus paid the penalty of sin. Okay? Jesus paid the penalty of sin, like I showed you. The penalty was paid. Jesus was fully God and fully human. Okay? You have to understand this fact. Jesus was fully God and fully human. All right? And uh, what happened is that at the cross, Jesus laid his life. He said, let me give my life for these people. Let me die for their sake. Let me lay myself so that these people can have my life and I have my death. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about here. Jesus said, I will do this for them. Okay? I'm going to do this for them. You are the one who was supposed to be on that cross. But uh, Jesus said, no, let me do it for him. Let me do it for her. Are you seeing the point here? That's the reason. That's the major reason. And we have to understand this very clearly. We understand this fact. That Jesus died for our sin. He was there at that cross. People looking at him. Mocking him. And that's the only way. Because uh, we understand that Jesus was without sin. And he lived a perfect life. But he was crucified on the cross. He died a sinner's death. The Bible tells us. He died a sinner's death. Let me show you something here. 2 Corinthians uh, 5 verse 21 see what the bible says for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in him you see jesus had no sin but he was made sin so that he can do what he can make us righteous so we are righteous not based on what we do not based on trying to amend our wrongs not by the basis of trying to uh, be a good person or trying to uh, pay alms and uh, go to church and be a good person, but we are saved. We are righteous based on the fact that Jesus laid his life and took our sin. All right? So we know Jesus spoke the truth and uh, that his sacrifice on our behalf was effective because... Um, because... Uh, He rose from the dead. If Jesus could not have risen from the dead, then I don't think anything could be, we could be even preaching. Why would we preach of uh, how Jesus is going to raise us up and uh, himself he never rose? You see, our uh, Christianity is because we are sure of who we are believing. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 15, Three. This is the main thing why we believe. For I deliver unto you first that which I also received. How that Christ died. You see, Jesus became man. He died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the main thing why we believe. Because he died, he was buried and he rose. He took your place. You're basically the one who was dying, being buried, and rising up again. So 2,000 years ago, you rose with Christ. And the Bible tells us, it is not longer I who lives, but it is him who lives in me. Let me show you something here in verse 20. Look at this verse. But now, 
But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. You see? For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. You see, one man, Adam, brought us death. But one man, Jesus, brought us the resurrection. Look at verse 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Will be made alive in Jesus. So Jesus died and was buried and he was physically raised back to life. And that Jesus conquered sin and death and he made it possible for us not to be stuck in our sin and guilt and shame. We're not supposed to be stuck there. We're already out of that. He made a way for us to move past despair. We were desperate. Back in those days, we didn't know what to do. But Jesus made us to go past despair into a true life. Let me show you John 10.10. 10. John 10 verse 10. The thief, come, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. You see why the thief comes? To steal, kill, and destroy? But Jesus came so that we can have his life and have it more abundantly. He offers forgiveness to us. If we'll put our trust in him, put your trust in Jesus, that death at the cross, put your trust in the blood that Jesus shed at that cross. He shed his blood at the cross. He was there. Of course, this, this is a picture I'm showing you, but I want you to get the concept. He shed his blood for you. That blood was supposed to be your blood which is being shed. Alright? So, guys, when you believe that Jesus died for you, you become a new creature. And the old things are gone, and the new things have come. And uh, even if you find yourself doing wrong things, you have not lost your salvation. You have not lost your salvation. What really happens is that you are in a bad relationship with your father if you continue sinning and doing what is wrong. All you need to do is tell your father, Dad, I'm sorry. Dad, sorry for this. Dad, I'm sorry for this. Just the same way you can go to your normal father here on earth and tell him, Dad, I'm sorry for I took your car and I, and I smashed it. Something really happened. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, he'll be angry with you, but does he tell you you're no longer my son? No. You are now in the kingdom of God, and you're now a new creature. All right? Let me show you. Uh, second, second Corinthians uh, 5, verse 17. All right? Let me show you this. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Are you seeing this? You become new in Christ. You become new and you become a child of God. John 1 verse 12. I'll read to 13. But as many as received him to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. So when you're a child, you're no longer an alien. You're no longer someone else from, from outside. You're no longer a stranger. God knows you. He knows his children. That's why uh, 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 the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 7 that uh, on that day many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did I not do this? Did I not do this? And he'll tell you, away from me, I never knew you. It's because these people, they will think because I try to amend things trying to amend, I did wrong thing, let me try to do two good things, to amend the wrong things. They think, now I am saved because I do this. Others, they think, uh, I will try being good all through so that I can, you know, but Jesus will tell you, I never knew you because you never became my child. I never knew you. I've never known you. You're a stranger to me. If a stranger is doing good things outside there in the marketplace, how will the apparent know they don't, uh, they're not even concerned what you're doing because that's a, tra a stranger. He's doing good things outside there. So how does he concern me? Are you seeing the point here? But if you're a child of God, he knows his children. Are you seeing the point here? 
But as many as received him to, he, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood. You see, you're born not of blood, not as just human, nor the will of the flesh, not in the flesh way, nor of the will of man, but of God. You're now born in the spirit. That's what we call being born in the spirit. Understood? So your sins can be forgiven. You can be forgiven. All you need to do is put your trust in Jesus Christ. Put your trust in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That blood gave you life. Because the Bible tells us very clearly, as I wind up, in Leviticus 17 verse 11. Why is the blood so important? Why, why is it always about the blood? Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Alright? So if you remove blood, then that creature has died. So Jesus removed his blood from his body for you. His body, his blood was shed for you. Because when Jesus died and his blood was shed, then he died for you. You took his life, he took your, he took your, your, your death penalty. And the Bible says, and I've given it to you upon the altar. It is only blood upon the altar which can make atonement for your souls. Not for your body, for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. That's why the blood was really important, the blood of Jesus which he shed for you. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you've been able to be blessed. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and also you can... Uh, Share to your friends and also subscribe and check on the description below. We have a couple of other channels whereby you can also uh, check it, check them out on BitChute on Facebook. Please check and also share to your friends. Let them hear the good news of Jesus Christ. God bless you and have a blessed time.